Hello. Wow. A bit too much. Okay. Beautiful day. We're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not hard rain. It's just kind of ambient rain. <laughs> Welcome. Let's all just take a breath and settle in. We're here. The hardest part is getting here. And you're here. So great. And we'll begin this morning with a prayer. Great Spirit, in us, through us, and all around us. We now bring your essence to our presence. And seek to articulate your presence in this world. By moving, acting, learning, loving, praying, and making everything a better place following our presence. We're grateful for our ability to affect the world around us. We're grateful. We're grateful for all our many blessings. The smallest of blessings should be a reminder of your presence in our lives. We pray that we can walk the walk that brings us closer and helps us remember. We pray that those around us, like ourselves, can welcome your peace into our hearts, into our lives, and into this world today, every day, right now, and always. Please, Lord, remember those who are in harm's way. Remember those, the least, the lost, and the last. Give them comfort. Give them a knowingness of your presence. May we seek to feel and act upon the Christ light within us through your strength is our joy. Amen. Ooh. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to the online people. I always like to welcome the online people who are here, Facebook and YouTube. You know you're with us in this moment if you feel a slight curve at the corners of your mouth. Even if you watch this later, you're still in this moment with us right now. And welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are we ready for a, an opening uh, song, some music? Did I miss anything? I'm just, I'm just going off me this morning, <laughs> folks. God bless. It's a beautiful morning. Oldies, yeah.
Together, we'll recite our Unity Foundational Principle. There is only one power, one presence, active in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. And when we walk our talk, we are a thriving spiritual community here to inspire one another to realize God's love. Centered in the Spirit of God, we see peace, love, and abundance in an awakening world. The daily word for today is acceptance. Sunday, February 18th in the year of our Lord, 2024. Shall we? I practice acceptance and find peace. Yes, I practice acceptance and find peace. In the past, I have resisted unwelcome situations and unwanted outcomes. Over time, I have learned that my resistance did little more than leave me agitated and unhappy. I have learned to trade resistance for acceptance. Accepting situations as they are does not mean I like what is happening, but it does mean I am willing to be present with it without resistance or struggle. From that place, I am better able to work toward creating better conditions for myself and for others. When I practice acceptance, I invite the presence of God to inspire and comfort me. I shift my attention from what might feel wrong to that which is always right, the absolute, unchanging goodness of God. And our verse today is from Philippians 4 ch chapter 4 verse 11 not that I am referring to being in need for I have learned to be content with whatever I have yes. and next we have another meditation I am by beautiful chorus inspiring
satisfaction, pleasure and strain. Welcome, essence, beauty, presence, time, spirit, born in space. Welcome, excellence, every blessing, sacred and praise. Sorry that you're yeah, going to be manhandling a microphone. How do you know I'm going to manhandle it? Oh, I'm just okay. keep doing the Roman handle. <laughs> you think you know me. Well, you know. <laughs> Here, hold that. Okay. Because I need two hands for this purpose. Yes, yes probably. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience with us as, we, as we're growing, we're learning. Yes. We're practicing acceptance. Thank you. See? <laughs> Unity folks, unitics, we figure it all out. Oh, it does feel good in here <laughs> because you guys are here. So I invite you to get very comfortable in your chairs. This is an exciting time. We have just entered the Lenten season. So we are given an opportunity to do our work in a powerful and wonderful way. So get very comfortable. Take in some nice deep cleansing breaths to remind each cell that it's time to become still and release and journey deep within. So take those deep breaths, <sighs> stimulating the lungs and the heart. 
rejuvenating the blood supply with nutrients that feed each muscle and tissue and bone. We are walking miracles with the very energy of God flowing in and through easily. I invite you to journey deep within to that center core of your being. Feel your heart with each gentle pump. God is there with each breath. God breathes through you. Journey deeply in this inner canvas of creative genius, your body temple, where God resides. And I invite you to go away from this place and time. Allow those inner senses to come to life. Those inner senses where we are able to perceive God, the more time we spend within, the more we hear that sweet, gentle voice, the more we see what God sees and feel what God feels. Let us go away from this space together. Imagine yourself in a thick forest with crisp air perhaps after the rain, the trees around you still wet and weepy. Breathe in the rich forest aroma, the scent of Mother Earth, piney, clear, clean, nurturing. You hear in the distant crashing of waves, you must be near a vast sea and ocean. You instinctively head towards those sounds. You come to a clearing at the edge of that thickness and you see a coast, rough looking. You see those waves crashing in. You make your way down to a beautiful cove, a small, safe, protective space. You see that the waves have come in and carved out this special area and you sit at the edge and watch. Just above you, a large piece of driftwood it looks like a beautiful altar before the sea. In the distance to your side, you see these massive, glorious, evergreen trees, these pines seem to be jutting right out of these cliff faces where two most beautiful sights, the mountains and the sea, meet. Here you are in this protective cove, enjoying the splendor. As the waves come in, they leave little gifts and they take out that which no longer needs to be. Near the driftwood, perhaps, there is a shell, some more branches of wood. You hear above you a magnificent bird, huge. In nature's perfect timing, a feather is released and drifts gently down in front of you, finding a perfect space on that driftwood altar. Is Mother Nature creating an altar for you? How lovely. As you relax in that splendor, breathe easily. Observe what you are seeing with your inner vision what the sea is bringing you and gifting you with in its vast eons of knowledge and wisdom and life. You feel cleansed in that salty air. You see a heavy fog, misty, around those massive trees. It begins to 
lift. You allow yourself to be part of that nature, God's gifts to us, extraordinary beauty. You take it in and relax fully in the quiet of this beautiful vision. You simply observe. No judgment, no preconceptions. Just enjoy what you are feeling, what you are seeing, what you are experiencing, what you are hearing as that altar continues to build. The sea gives you the trees nurture and feed you. The aromas fill you, soothe you, relax. beautiful sweet space with every wave that comes in you feel cleansed washed rinsed released fortified strengthened encouraged blessed and as we prepare to bring ourselves back to this space and time. Let us set an intention during this season of Lent, this journey to the resurrection of our spirit in full Christ's light. Let us set an intention to be fully present to the gifts that come rolling, pouring into our life every day every moment as we observe and pay attention and open to the splendor, the beauty, abundance of God. Feel gratitude in your heart, gratitude for being part of this extraordinary journey. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for re Minding us of the power of your presence with every breath, with every movement, with every word. You are. <laughs> Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. That's kind of a beautiful ringtone. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. So many angels here. Thanks, sound team. We're working tirelessly to work out all the kinks. And I'm just, I think it's a fantastic challenge to have that so many people want to hear us loud and clear that we get calls saying, we can't hear you. Fix that. We are, so thank you all. And thank you our Valentine's angels, Shirley and Joanne, I'm sure, that left all these Valentines around. Are you opening them? They're for you. Isn't that great? So fantastic. So we have just started a season of Lent. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to try not to wander. <laughs> Stay put. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that would never do. Oh, So we've begun the season of Lent. And for those of you um, who may have been raised Catholic or in some of the Protestant groups that celebrate or practice Lent, observe Lent, Unity's journey through Lent is a little different than you may be accustomed to. You know, you know what? I think I'll just hold this. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. This yeah. On? There. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, I'm going to have to learn. <laughs> oh, my elves are playing. <laughs> like there? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I've only done this 25 years. You'd think I'd get used to a mic, right? <laughs> the season of Lent. Charles Fillmore talks about Lent in depth. Um, as a spiritual journey, which was what drew me to it. I never practiced Lent as a child. That was not part of our church. I had some Catholic friends who, to them, it was just a time of sadness, of giving something up, of fasting, of being reminded that they were sinners. I thought that was so icky. They did, too. They just really never voiced it to their parents, just to me, you know. Um, but Charles talks about observing Lent by letting go and fasting from those things that no longer serve us. And he brings in, for the first Sunday in Lent, the altar. And I didn't really understand that the first few years that I studied Take a, Keeping a True Lent by Charles Fillmore, for those of you studying the book. Um, I didn't really understand that and why it was so early on. didn't understand Lent or excuse me, didn't understand the whole idea of an altar. But the more I read it, the more I spend time with it, the more I understand why he kind of kicks off the season of Lent with an altar. It officially started on Wednesday when a lot of um, practitioners go to their churches and get the little crosses. We had a special service here on Wednesday where we did a little spiritual ceremony of that journey because we are physical creatures, spiritual beings. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience, but we are those, both. So Lent, for me, I practice in both ways, as a way of being reminded and deepening my spiritual practice of being one with God. That's what the whole journey is about. That's what unity is about, discovering God within us, discovering the power that we have, and Lent is a beautiful way to experience that, especially with this day-by-day -day God. But also because there's hundreds of thousands, probably millions of people, not just from Christianity, but other sects, that during this time of the year, it is extremely spiritually powerful, even before religions were created. It is a time of renewal. Springtime is a time of all that you have planted coming forth in fruition. And it is celebrated and honored. So there's this energy that lifts you through this season that we can just jump on and ride. There are 40 days very significant in the journey of Lent and six Sundays through those on our way to Easter. The first Sunday is about the altar. And I'm just going to share with you what Charles Fillmore says about the altar and then why it is so powerful as a spiritual practice to begin to understand who you are. The altar, and it's, it's actually, for those of you following along in the Bible, it's also from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 21 through 26. The altar represents a fixed, definite center in the consciousness of man. It is a place within 
where we meet God face to face and are willing to give up that which blocks us, to give up the lower for the higher, the personal for the impersonal, the animal for the divine. It is here that we begin to understand and practice that we are not separate from that God. And I love that it is an altar because altars represent sacredness in all traditions. In the nine major religions, you will see the Hindu families first thing in the morning led by the mother and the girls. They go to the altar first thing and they honor God. And they do so physically and with prayer, fruit, flowers. They start their day at the altar. Your chaplains here, your prayer chaplains, are encouraged to have an altar that they create, that they go to in prayers for us, for you. They do the work of prayer ministry in this community and in ministries of unity around the globe. The altar is a reminder to become still. It doesn't in itself have particular powers, except when they're, we're there with it. Then it takes on extraordinary meaning. I have a very large altar in my back room along the wall. It's a table that a friend of mine built. And on it, I have my Shabbat candles and the candles of those I'm holding the high watch for. And then whatever I want to take into this journey with me. For some reason, the mount where the ocean and the mountains meet came to me this morning early in meditation. So I'm excited to continue to build my journey for this Lent season based on what I would find there. So I encourage you just to prepare yourself physically and mentally to build, a cha uh, to build an altar when you get home and to put on it those things that remind you of God and your connection, those things that are very special to you. You won't have to go looking for them because just setting the intention, <laughs> Jerry goes, I know, I know. They will fly out and find you, those special things to remind you. When you see it in the morning, you go, oh, yeah, go to your altar first. Set your consciousness. He then follows this up <laughs> in a way to know the unrevealed spirit, and it is through prayer, effective prayer treatment. This is where we find Myrtle's work. And the altar, maybe as children, in some of our religions, we would go to the altar and get on our knees and pray to a God that is out there. As we grow spiritually and evolve, understanding that that God is within, we can then go to the altar and turn within to remind ourselves of the strength within. And these are prayers. And Charles writes, prayer does not change God, it changes us. You do not ask God for a favor, the favor is within you. And how will you receive that favor? Unitics out there? You give it, right? Deep desire, this is key, and I didn't get this for several years because it wasn't part of my consciousness in the way that I was trained um, and what I learned in my cultural experience. Deep desire is essential for spiritual growth. Okay, here's, this is where it gets tricky. Stay with me. Desire <laughs> is the prayer. Now, this took me a while because I wasn't spiritually minded. And I thought desire, because I'm coming from ego, and I'm coming from a place of human understanding. So I'm thinking, desi I'm desiring to win the lottery. <laughs> I thought, that doesn't sound very sacred and holy. I'm desiring um, a promotion at work. I'm desiring that new sports car. What are those desires on your heart? Desiring a new mate? Desiring to get rid of a mate? I don't know what your desires are. But these desires, these wants, these wishes in us, these are prayers. <laughs> because we know in unity, everything you think, feel, speak, and do is a prayer. Because you are setting up in your vibrational field. This is what Jesus taught us. What you want to return, what you put out comes back, what you sow, so shall you reap. It's that transitional and can happen that quick. So you can look around your life experience and see what you've been praying for. Have you been speaking words of illness and sadness and weakness and tiredness? Do you wake up on the phone and say, I'm sick and tired of being, yeah, you're going to get more of it. Do you go to the mailbox feeling lack? The universe will provide lots more opportunities to experience lack. What is your life experience showing you? 
So then how do we translate what we truly do desire into that prayer where we feel it? <laughs> One of my mentors told me that every desire you have is God saying, hello, are you there? Every desire is a prayer. Let me ask you, what is the feeling of desire in you? It goes through your whole body, every cell. And if one of your desires is, wow, I would really love that promotion. I would really love to hit the lottery. It's not the money you think. It's not the promotion you think you want. It's the feeling that you would have if you knew you had that in the bank. What would you feel? Huh. Ease, calm, soothed, powerful, okay, accept it, whatever. But that's what it is you're craving. That's the God in you, the desire. That's what makes it a lot easier than we make it. If what you're desiring, you think, is that perfect spouse, there's no such thing. There cannot be. We're in boot camp. <laughs> What you're desiring is what you think it would bring you, but you already possess that. There have been times in my life where I felt rich with $10 in my pocket. I know that feeling. It doesn't matter if it's 10 or 10 million. It's not that. God creates all of that, but God is not that. God is not that lotto win, that ticket. No, it's greater than that. That's why, Unity folks, we were kind of happy when shows and books like The Secret came out because they kind of pointed their way to unity. But that's not what unity is. That's an opportunity to learn how powerful these spiritual teachings are. It's a window, but we don't stop at the material good that comes. That's just the frosting on the cake <laughs> as soon as we understand the power of what we are asking for. So what are you asking for? What is the deepest desire in your heart? To be happy, to be well, to be comfortable? You already have that power. You've won the lottery. <laughs> Hello? You've already got it. It's so simple, but it's not easy to do. Because we get caught up in everything we've learned, everything we've been told, everything that has modeled what should be. The way of us believe this is success, the money, the gold. But that never stops. That is never satisfying enough. There's never enough. There's never enough money if you're seeking money. There's never enough frosting if you're <laughs> craving frosting. There's never, ever, because that's material. So how do you maintain that balance and that fulfilling enough? It's by being it. So this is our challenge. This is our task through Lent. In meditation, what are the desires of my heart? Go a little deeper. If only I had. Go a little deeper. Allow yourself and play with it, especially if you have a partner. Play with it. And I love doing this with my husband because he would trick me because he was always smarter than me. I don't care how much schooling I've had in spirituality. He never went to church a day, well, one day of his life, and I told you the preacher ran off with the whatever. It was a mess, and so he never went back. I don't blame him. But he knew more about this stuff than I ever knew. So he would play with me, and he'd say, well, what do you want? Oh, well, I'd like to have, you know, a bigger house. When we first moved into the house, the plumbing went out, three kids, one bedroom, one bath, no heat, no air. Well, I would like to have air conditioning. <laughs> I'd like to have one more bathroom with all these athletes in the house. No, that's not what it is. What would it feel like to have that? That's just the beginning. And you're planting the seeds. What would that feel like? That's the joy of going into the prayer treatment. That's what Myrtle did, by the way, when she was so deathly ill. She went in and realized, what would it feel like? Wow. She recognized she had been cursing her liver all these years for not helping her out and being strong enough. 
It wasn't the magic cure. It wasn't living a life that she thought she would live. It was the feeling of how that would be, and she already had that. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not that complicated. And we get, especially ADHD folks, and we all have that somewhere on the spectrum. Squirrel, you know, we do our work so well, and then all of a sudden you're back. You phone call, and you're, oh, yeah, and I got that too. I must, I, I better go to the doctor, or I, you know, whatever. Own. And when you decide to take this journey seriously, buckle up. Because like any exercise you do in the gym for your muscles, God will throw you a heavier weight. Because it is a spiritual journey. You've got to be equipped. So this first week of Lent is just about exploring those things you think you want. And it's okay. Write them down. Be silly. The things you've always wanted. Some of those things keep coming back to you. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen women marry the same man seven times, seven different faces. It's the same. It's got a different name and a different job. It's the same guy. It's, <laughs> it's not the job. God's already got you. You've got the perfect person right now into your life. You're right where you're supposed to be. So spend some time at the <laughs> And I know there's times that I don't want to be here anymore. Okay. Let's treat our way out of it. Yes? You know all about this stuff. You all do. You're all, I'm singing to the choir here. So this first part of our journey, create an altar, a physical reminder in your home. Would you wake up and see? It will, it will create a holiness and a sacredness in your home unlike anything you've experienced. Create an altar. And use the Lent season to build it for you. Spend time in meditation. You probably already picked up a few things in meditation that you want to put on that altar. Have fun with it. This is a joyous ride. It's boot camp, but it's a joyous ride. And you're not here alone. Look at all these other troopers. You're not here alone. And then spend time with a journal, perhaps, if you're so inclined. What do I really want? Wayne Dyer would say, what do you really, 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 really want? Because we think... Oh, well, it would be great if we had that. And then we think, and then we get that. Oh, well, that's kind of disappointing. So go beneath. Invite your angels. What do I really, really, really want? And then recognize you have it. It is simply a feeling of having it. So I want to take a minute so that we can all feel it. And I'm going to do something that we all know. Do you guys remember the first day of summer vacation? When you wake up in the morning and first you don't know, you don't realize it yet and you, you and you think oh school and then you summer and you're and you're alive and energized and you jump outside and it's warm and it's summery and you hear your friends and you've got all the time you know how that going in and out, in and out. Maybe I'm done. <laughs> that may be God saying you've said enough. <laughs> so we're going to build the altar. We're going to begin to explore those true desires and play with them, have some fun with them. You going to switch me out again? <laughs> Musical microphone. But I am going to leave this time of our service with one, a Hindu Sans an ancient Sanskrit scripture that I'm sure you've heard before, but it's so powerful and it reminds us of what this season is about and where God is in all of this. And the ancients reminded us, God sleeps in the minerals, wakes in the plant, runs in the animal, and thinks in man. No place God is not. And a reminder from Jesus, it is not I, <laughs> but the Father in me doing the work. Yes? I want to hear what your desires are this week. Namaste.
Will the ushers come forward, please? Thank you for that, Reverend Lori. That was that was wonderful. Can I, I might even do my homework this time. <laughs> <laughs> Together we'll dedicate the tithes and offerings. Divine love flowing in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. There's a holy hush around me, I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. There's a holy hush around us. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this The message today applies. Take, take everything, plant, plant a sacred seed in our prayer box. This is ours. It is ours collectively, part of the ministry, part of our family. Place the prayers in. Let them be watered by our chaplains and sent to Silent Unity that they be watered and fertilized to grow more 30 days of prayer at Silent Unity and bloom in their right and perfect place and time. Dear Lord, please bless these blessings. Please bless these prayers. Let them be part of our faith part of the substance and part of the evidence of that which is unseen. May they bloom and grow like a mighty oak tree. Amen. Any children today? Oh, Kinsley, okay. She's busy, yeah. Creating. We always bless the children inside of us, so that can be included. 
as always. We Hello, good morning, Kinsley. I can see. Okay, let's bless our children as soon as we get the text up. We love you. We appreciate you. We see you loved, guided, and protected. And we empower you to do great things. Yay. Announcements. Do we have visitors in the audience today? We have some people I haven't seen for a while, but I've been gone too. We have some new people, and we'd like to give you our special blessing. Here, you don't have to stand up or anything. Um, but welcome. Glad to see you. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We love you. We bless you. We behold the Christ in you. We love you. We bless you. We hold the Christ in you. Thanks. Nice to see y'all. Oh, gosh, we got a lot of announcements, but we'll start at the top of the list. Please stick around for conversation, coffee, and carbs. Grab a snack, and we will have... Um, uh, 1115, we'll have the Unity Conversations, which is an extension of the service for those who want more. Uh, the Wednesday Gathering Circle continues this Wednesday. We had a bunch of people, I, like 18 people with Reverend Lori. So it's really becoming a, I don't know what you call it, it's a circle. Yeah, that's, it, it, it's a circle and it does what a circle does. <laughs> it's beautiful, and we love it, and please come and have, we will join us in the discussion from 12.30 to 2 on Wednesday. Unity of now Ocala is now hosting Lynn Woodland's Miracle Course every Wednesday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. via Zoom. For the Zoom link, go to unityocala.org, or for Lynn's course, feel free to visit www.lynnwoodland.com. And it's just also in our e-news. You probably all get the e-news. If you don't, you can sign up for the e-news. Give Shirley your email address, and you'll know better what's going on. Lynn, do you want to give a special welcome to anybody? Or Flyers about it are in the back. Um, this month, we're, we're really looking at how to uh, up our vibration of love and what we put out to the world to call back to the people, the community, the opportunities, the open doors that will best serve us. Okay, and save the date for the Infinite Possibilities lesson and workshop, which will be after um, church service on March 3rd and April 7th. Janice Marie, who we all know and love, will be uh, offering us her services in the form of those workshops of the infinite possibilities. So that's coming up. Save the date. Due to church activities throughout February, the next meeting of the book club will be Sunday, March 10th. And the book title is Consciousness, Consciousness of Deserving by R. Burkus. If you'd like to join us, please see Joanne or Shirley. March 10th, there's plenty of time to read the book. So get the book, read the book. But if, if you didn't read the book, you can still come as I have been invited to come. And, and I, I'd never read the book. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, it's, always, it's always a good, a good discussion. Um, drum circle Saturday night. We still meeting at 5.30. We haven't had the time change yet. So I don't know about the weather. We always talk about the weather. I hope it's not raining, but we'll be inside. If it's not raining or too cold, Shirley always helps me with what too cold is defined as, but we'll figure it out, Shirley. Well, hopefully it will be perfect, 
and it's been perfect, and we will have a fire, and we'll sit outside, and we'll drum, and sing, and give thanks. Next Sunday, a lot going on. Yeah. Next Sunday is our annual meeting. Right? Is that the 25th? The 25th next Sunday? Yes. So, um, hope everybody put in your membership slips to be a voting member. We don't have a lot to vote on this time. But um, members of In Good Standing have, uh, have uh, voting privileges for what's going on, the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and um, but uh, we, it's something we do every year. And um, you're welcome to participate in a limited uh, vantage point as a non-member. But as a member, there's there's some interesting things with our bylaws. You're you're invited to ask for any issue to be brought forward in prayer, and no one no one really does it. But I always like to say that because it it defines us that that if there's an issue, yes. Um, what else is going on? There's a lot going on. Oh, the board is working on announcing our plant sale. Now, it's clear on up in April, and it's, it's way ahead of time, but if the, the plant people have been talking about it, and um, we're, we're, we're digging up, we're propagating, we're doing things to get ready for that now. Hopefully, we don't have a frost, but um, if you have, maybe, maybe you, could, you could help by, if you have a stack of empty pots, you know, that are sitting in the garage, and you don't know what to do with, bring, bring them by. Put them out by my car or in the garden or tell me about it. And uh, we'll distribute those to the propagators amongst us. And um, it potting soil would be good too. Yeah. And if you, have, if you have a plant that's sending out too many runners or something like that and you need to clean it up anyway, dig it up, put it in a pot. It's Florida. Things, things grow. Things spread. And um, so we'll we'll come up with now. No one's really taken charge of it, so we don't know what the plant sale is going to be. It it cookies, I don't know, something like that on the side. We don't know, but it's a the first weekend in April. Music. Yeah, yeah, music is good. I'll bring my guitar. Sure, we'll have fun. We will have fun. We will have fun. And it won't be the rummage sale. <laughs> Always at the rummage sale. We had to clean up the, the sanctuary before Sunday morning service. That was really hard. And, and my van was full of stuff. <laughs> okay, any more announcements? Anybody have anything for the good of the church? I'm running the microphone around in case you do have something so everybody can hear us. But uh, Bruce and I, B&B, &B, we are rehearsing after Coffee and Cobbs here for the last Sunday in February to be a live performance of music. And if you'd like to participate in the band for live Sundays, the last Sunday of every month, please let us know or stick around for the rehearsal. We want to have a band that is what would be organic. It grows from the congregation. So thank you. Thank you. And with that, are we ready for our prayer for protection? Stand if you're comfortable doing so. And the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Thank you, everybody.
You're a smile, you're my guest, you're the earth, you're the sun, you're the grass, you are love, you're my hands, you're a bug, you're my eyes, you're a hug, you're the light and the dark, you're the...